The grand vision of cryptocurrency is to be the currency of choice for the people, away from the control of the elite who are playing the money game just to benefit the 1% of the world's population. However, cryptocurrency at its current state is not ready for mainstream usage. Ethereum's capacity has been reported to be almost full with escalating transaction fees. Transaction time in Bitcoin, the granddaddy of all cryptocurrency, can take from minutes to hours or even days for successful confirmation. It seems that the dream of a financial utopia will remain a dream unless developers start looking at the core problems plaguing this industry instead of coming up with high concept solutions that don't really work. It's no wonder that people are getting jaded with yet another blockchain project in the making, asking for funds. Those who have been in this industry for the last many years have grown jaded with the news today, which is why looking at what Bosco is doing is rather refreshing to me. They are doing great things that people are not aware of. If you have been following me on Rock the Block Live, then you'll know that one of my biggest love and concern is on solving the cross-chain issue. It's one thing to be developing dApps on your favorite protocol, but if none of these dApps can interact seamlessly on a network with one another, what you're going to get is a whole landscape full of brilliant ideas working in silos catering to a fragmented ecosystem. And there's no way in hell that these products can strive and scale if they're fighting in a small pond. The second concern is also the most important concern that we are constantly trying to solve. How can cryptocurrency processing speed match up to existing payment solutions? No matter how you try to paint a fancy picture to save humanity from its oppressors, one simple fact remains. People are not likely to change their ways that they are used to if the alternative is a crappier option. Today in the market, we have GrabPay, Alipay, WeChat Pay, Amazon Pay, Payona, PayPal, Payla, even credit cards of all types, colors, and reward tiers. On the cryptocurrency fund, we have Monaco and 10x giving you the ease of swiping your card and paying by cryptocurrency. However, all these solutions are still very centralized. In a centralized and controlled payment network, the company, the central control, is responsible for doing what it says it's going to do. And should there be any glitch, the company can just reverse the transaction. It is fast and most importantly, safe. They can guarantee that by having a complex system on the back end that looks at credit ratings, amount of money you have in the bank and such. So in the case of credit card, when you swipe your credit card and back your purchase, the money is not immediately transferred over to the merchant. And that is fine for the merchant because the merchant trusts the credit card company and knows that the company is obliged to make the transaction happen. So the merchant will eventually get his money. But the downside to having such assurance and convenience at your fingertips is that you are now at the mercy of the credit card company. And that usually means high fees or revolving policies that might be disadvantages to you. But hardcore proponents of a decentralized environment don't like the idea of being shackled by Big Brother, and they can be quite tolerant of the inadequacies of a free system. Let's take Bitcoin for example. On average, a block is added to the blockchain every 10 minutes, and once a transaction is on the block, it is considered one confirmation. And you will need six confirmations just to be considered safe. And since there is no central control or responsibility by any one person, you need multiple confirmations or the consensus to validate your transaction. DPoS or the Delegated Proof of Stake model improves upon this efficiency, but it can still take up to a few minutes. So here is the cryptocurrency conundrum. A decentralized currency with very low transaction fees is the ideal scenario. However, it is not exactly the most convenient when it comes to day-to-day -day transaction at a crowded checkout counter. And this is the area that Boscor is trying to solve. 3S, L-I-B, 3S stands for 3 seconds, L-I-B stands for Last Irreversible Block. One of the motivations of achieving the 3 second benchmark is for Boscor's solution to actually be a usable and viable option for real world transaction. Achieving this would effectively answer Satoshi Nakamoto's call for a decentralized electronic cash. A piece of technology is only as useful as its ability to solve real world problems. 10 years on since Bitcoin was born, cryptocurrency is still plagued by bad press. In fact, the banks that we are trying to take down 10 years ago are now laughing at us at all these infighting and scam jobs happening around the cryptocurrency landscape. 
So we know that 3S LIB is a pretty darn important concept in trying to solve a very critical issue. But how does it work? I doubt most of us really care what goes on in the sausage, but I'm quite curious to know that Bosco is not just all talk and fluffy message and that it actually has a solution. Bosco adopts PBFT, which stands for Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance. You can go and Google it up to get the full geeky explanation of what it means. In a nutshell, BPFT is a computer algorithm that decides how nodes in a network communicate with each other and to prevent failures from happening due to malicious nodes. You can find BFTs on airplane systems, nuclear power plants, or any system that depends on multiple sensors. So if an algorithm is used in nuclear power plant to prevent catastrophe from bad actors, it is good enough for the blockchain. Here's a simple analogy to understand what BPFT does. Imagine you have a bunch of people in a room and a curtain on the window. If the majority of the people in the room says the curtain is green, therefore the curtain must be green. Boscore uses batch PBFT, which is an optimized version of the pipeline PBFT used in EOS. By confirming transactions in batches, Boscore is able to increase the speed while still addressing security concerns. So 3S LIB has been put to the test since July 2019, and so far, it has shown promising results. According to the Boss Core team, Boss Chain has the fastest finality and is also equipped with IBC. And IBC is important because it settles the cross-chain issues. So technical issues aside, what this improvement does for the community is that it now allows dev builders with great ideas who were previously impeded from real user adoption because of crippling issues like speed and volatile fees to actually bring these ideas to life. And since Boscore has its own cross-chain capability, it solved the small pawn issue that I mentioned previously by allowing these devs to interact on other networks. So the next time you wave your card, scan a QR code, or make an instant payment, know that behind the scenes is a convoluted series of ingenuity and tech that allows you to take all that for granted. And what Boscore is setting out to do is to bridge that convenience with the freedom that comes from a decentralized blockchain. My name is Eugene Tay, and you're listening to me on Rock the Block Live.